Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 7 for the 2016 to 2017 academic year with me Craig Barson. Now a lovely lovely resource here, I've got a real soft spot for this resource for a number of reasons. Uh, firstly the topic area it covers, cubic graphs. Now. I reckon that when this resource was designed, um, it was designed with A-level students in mind, and, and certainly the kind of challenge level um, is such that it, it fits perfectly into, into an AS core maths course, but cubic graphs have, as hopefully we, we all know, have, have found their way into far more prominence in the new GCSE specification. Whereas previously students will be expected to plot a table of values for, for a cubic um, and then and then draw draw the graph on, get in the right shape of the curve, um, or possibly even do some simple f of x transformations on cubics, translate them up and down, maybe even a, a stretch. What's coming now, and it's stated in the specification, is that students need to be able to sketch cubics from when they're factorised into three linear functions. Now that's brand new, um, and if students haven't been taught that, um, they're going to do well to figure that out. And obviously it's related into quadratics being factorised and so on into two linear functions, but it's still new content to the GCSE. So that's one reason I like it. Anything that covers the new GCSE spec, because there's not that much good stuff out there for it, I'm a huge, huge fan of. So this is a resource that um, if you like it, it can be used with the year 11s and it can also be used with the year 12 and 13 students. And the other reason I like it is it takes very little teacher input. It's one of those resources you can just give to the kids and say, off you go. And finally, and I know I'm giving this some build up here, could be another anticlimax coming, coming your way, is that um, it lends itself perfectly well to a nice bit of technology. And those of you, and there's kind of a spoiler alert here in the tab up here, I'm gonna be firing up a bit of Desmos very soon. So let's have a look at the resource. Um, it's available in PDF and Word format, and I'm always a big fan of that because um, PDF, nice and easy, printed off and so on, but Word means that I can edit it and adapt it if I need to. So let's take a look at the, the PDF. So very simple, all you need to do is give the kids uh, one, of the, one of these sheets each with, with the equations on there and say to them, okay, and what I'd like to do is I'd like you to match each of these equations to one of these graphs and then loads and loads of graphs there of cubics for the kids to play with. And that's it. That's all you need to do to, to start the kids off. Now, of course, if you've got year 11 students or weaker year 12 and 13 students, they're going to need a little bit of support along the way. But as I say, this resource essentially runs itself. So how are we going to run it now? My, I've, I've thought of kind of a couple of ideas that I've used in the past with similar resources like this that, that will come into play. The first thing is, and this is possibly slightly controversial, I'd be tempted just to give out the equation cards like this without the graphs first. And I'd, I'd be tempted to give this particular sheet out and say, right kids, you have got 10 minutes to write down as much information as you can about the features of the graph of each of these 19 equations. And again, they may need a little bit of prompting, so maybe we'll do a little class example. Maybe we'll take, um, I don't know, maybe we'll take, I don't want to spoil anything because like number eight and number nine are classics. So maybe we'll take a simple one like number three. And I'll say, right, as a class, does anybody, can anybody tell me anything about this equation? Can anybody tell me uh, what type of graph it is? What shape it is? Is it, uh, and once they get it, it's a cubic, how do you know it's a cubic? Is it a positive cubic or a negative cubic? What about the y-intercepts? How do we know where it crosses the y-axis? Can we get that out without having to expand all three brackets? How do we know where it crosses the x-axis? How many times does it cross the x-axis? So we start to tease all these things out and possibly do this as a class first. And once they've got their head around number three, I'd be tempted, and this is a teaser for what's coming next, just to draw it in uh, Desmos. So we've got what, x minus two, x minus three, x plus one. So I've not uh, adapted this in any way, just to show you how easy it is. X minus two, X minus three, X plus one. So we get ourselves a lovely cubic, move it around. Little Desmos tip for you here, always go into projector mode, just makes it really nice. And again, I can just click on there and highlight just to show the students exactly where this graph did cross. So I've done that and I've set it up and then I'll be tempted to go back to this and say, right, Five, 10 minutes before I give you your graphs to match, just have a little look around these and just make a few little notes about key features that you think each of these graphs will have. Which ones do you know? Which ones don't you know? Which ones are gonna cause problems? And then I'd be giving out the graphs. Give out the graphs and then students have got a bit of a way into this task. 
it's not quite as unstructured or it's not quite as daunting as it might have been if you just give it to them straight away. And the other suggestion I'd make is I'd chuck in a Desmos token. And I've started doing this a lot, um, certainly with my sixth form, but um, I'm going to start doing it in my year 11s more this year as well. And that Desmos token um, allows them to uh, come to the front of the class where I've got Desmos fired up on my computer. Or if you're a school that allows them to have their phones out, they can do this on their apps themselves, on the Desmos uh, phone app. Um, is they can plot a single graph into Desmos. And it's really nice doing that because it makes them think which one are they going to use, which one do they think is the most difficult. And again, at the end of the class, um, end of the lesson, we can say which ones did you type into Desmos, which ones caused the, the biggest problems, why were they more difficult than the other ones. And it also familiarizes students with Desmos. And this, God, they sound like a flipping trailer for Desmos, but it's all free and I've no affiliation. I, I can promise you that one. But it familiarizes themselves with Desmos, which is a key tool for independent learning and investigation just like Wolfram Alpha is and JoJo and all that kind of stuff. So for all those reasons I was a huge 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 fan of this resource. I think it's absolutely fantastic. So give it a go with your year 11s, give it a go with your year 12s and 13s and if you like it come back on here and just share a little review. Okay I shall return with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care and bye for now.